The movie starts with a couple having some fun in the shower. They can't keep their hands off each other, and they don't even notice the baby monitor going off on the stand. Their baby is moving around in the back, but they don't see him. He walks over to the window, but due to their torrid lovemaking, their attention is not on anything else. Suddenly, the baby steps forward and falls out the window, hitting the snowy pavement. But still, the parents did not notice their baby falling to his death. Days later, the couple are at the funeral for their lost baby. He is crying his eyes out, but she has a dead look on her face, like she has lost all that mattered in her life. Suddenly, she collapsed and had to be helped. Sometime later, he visits her in the hospital with some flowers. She's been in the hospital for a month, but she doesn't recognize it at all. They're both highly educated people, and he is a psychologist and doesn't like the way her doctor is treating her. He is still upset about the doctor giving her too much medicine. He thinks he can treat her better than any doctor. She blames herself for the death of their child, but he was there as well and so does he. But she knew about their baby's recent behavior of waking up and walking around in the middle of the night. He's at the hospital again, but this time she is mad at him. He convinced the doctor to send her back home, and this has her pretty upset. A therapist shouldn't be involving themselves with family, but he still thinks he is smarter and can handle her issues better than anyone else. At home, they have some mail from the medical examiner's office, but he doesn't open it. He is cleaning up around the house while she stands still in the bathroom, dumping her meds. She's crying hard in their son's room, and he comes in to console her. She thinks the pain will stay the same, but he assured her that things will get better. That night, he was watching her sleep, but she questions his love for her and their child. He has always been distant, and she thinks that he sees her as a patient even before the incident. To her, he seems indifferent about the death of his child like he doesn't feel the grief as much as her. He then explains that he left them alone to go to Eden, a forest, so she could write her thesis alone with her child. She thinks he just lies to her about things sometimes. That's when she climbs on top of him. She is having a nightmare and wakes up to find herself in his arms. He gives her some breathing exercises and she calms down pretty quickly. She can't help herself from having hallucinations, but he talks her through it, which makes her want him more, but he resists. As she showers, he is talking to her about the need to get her back into the forest to get to the bottom of her trauma. According to him, she needs to face her fear of whatever is there to feel better. At breakfast, he wants to make a list of things that she's afraid of, but she can't come up with anything. She decides to get a drink, but the glass shakes in her hand. She can't control herself and collapses on the bathroom floor trying to gather herself and ends up banging her head onto the toilet until he comes in to stop her. He drags her to bed and can't keep his hand off of her and they end up making love. Since she can't figure out what scares her, he comes up with an idea of a location that scares her and she thinks of the woods, Eden. He is a bit vexed because she always wanted to go there, but there is still something else that scares her that they can't figure out. They start paying around and she bites him too hard making them stop. After some time, they make their way into the woods of Eden on a train. He uses hypnosis on her as she sinks deeper into a trance. She sees herself at a bridge, alone. She is walking through the woods, covered in fog. She talks about a foxhole that's difficult for her to walk by. She finally gets to the cabin, but he keeps her from walking inside. She lies down on the grass, and he wants her to melt into the green, and she does it. After the session, he affirms that she did well, but something is holding her back. They finally drive past the woods and start hiking towards the cabin. She keeps saying the ground is on fire when it clearly isn't, but when they sit down to check her feet, there are burn marks on them. They keep going until she feels like resting, so they take off their bags and lay down on the ground. He goes to explore the forest and spots a small deer. He creeps towards it very slowly and sees that it has a child dangling out from its back. They get up to walk and get to the bridge. She is terrified and he wants her to stay on the bridge and confront her fear, but she runs away. He tries to follow her, but she's gone. He keeps walking and comes across the foxhole she talked about earlier. He eventually gets to the cabin and looks around. Inside, he finds her sleeping on the bed and covers her up with a blanket. In the night, he's looking through pictures that she took with their son on the cabin. As they sleep, he is woken up by a knocking noise and she explains that it is just acorns falling on the roof. In the morning, he wakes up to find his hand out of the window covered in something. He panics and picks them out from his hand and gets back to sleep. Later on, she walks out to find him trying to carry a large rock. He's setting up rocks to do a little exercise because she ran away from him yesterday. He carries her over to the stone so she doesn't touch the grass. She's terrified, but he helps her off the stone and walks over to the other stone. She makes it and feels relieved but starts to cry. Then she notices a little bird fall out of the sky and be taken by an eagle. She cries again inside while he comforts her. 
He makes some tea while she tells him about feeling fear when she was here before. She even stopped writing when she felt the fear. She remembers working on her thesis called Gynocide. When she heard her baby crying outside, she runs out but can't find him anywhere. She goes deeper into the forest to find her baby back in the barn of the cabin. She realizes that he wasn't screaming, which felt odd to her. He thinks that fear is natural and she shouldn't be worried about reacting the way she did after hearing the crying. He thinks what she actually experienced was panic. This sends her into a frenzy and she attacks him. He manages to hold her down, but she is regretting coming here. That night in bed, she is talking about oak trees only needing to propagate every 100 years, but they spear hundreds of acorns regardless. He talks to her about how thoughts can distort reality, and then she says something about nature being Satan's church. Later in the day, He's working around the house when he finds the medical report about his son's death. He sits outside with some coffee, and she comes out of the house and sits with him. She slept pretty well and he looked glad. She tells him she loves him and they have a wonderful conversation. They take a hike into the woods and find the foxholes, and she puts her hand in it, showing she's not afraid. She seems cured and she can't stop smiling. She takes off into the woods and he slowly follows her but loses her again. He feels something odd in the greed and discovers a fox that was eating itself. And it speaks, saying, chaos reigns. He can't believe what he sees and stands there even in the rain. They're back home and the rain is falling hard outside and he can't sleep. He spots a leak and decides to fix it. He gets a ladder and brings a lantern to light his way in the attic. He finds all sorts of disturbing images of women being killed in sadistic ways throughout history. Then he sees her book, Gynocide. He opens it up to take a look and as the pages go by, the writing becomes more and more erratic until it becomes ineligible. He is trying to figure out the truth about this place and get her up to do one more exercise. He wants to roleplay as nature or Satan, anything that she fears. They go through the exercise and he figures out that she's interested in the nature that causes men to become cruel to women. She thinks female nature is also evil and cruel and they deserve punishment. Later, while in bed, she begs him to hit her but he refuses, making her cry, because she thinks he doesn't love her. She runs off outside and touches herself next to a tree. He shows up next to her and starts to hit her, and she doesn't want him to stop, and they have a wild night together outside. The next morning, he is upset at her for thinking that women deserve to be tortured and killed. He is worried that she actually wants these cruel things to happen to her and other people. She later finds the autopsy report of her child, and she is surprised. He finds a photo of their son, where the shoes are on wrong, and this makes him leave to go out in the fog. He can't stop thinking about the photos, and the shoes are all wrong in all of them. As he writes on his paper, she barges in and starts to hit him, saying he wants to leave her. He tries to tell her he isn't, and she goes to open his pants and forces herself on him. When he doesn't respond, she hits him with a giant block of wood, knocking him out. She can't stop, even while he's passed out. She later forces a screw into his leg and walks out to hide the wrench. He wakes up to find a giant metal piece bolted to his leg and tries to take it out. He finds the toolbox and looks for the wrench, but she has already hidden it. He is in severe pain and drags himself out to look for a way to be free of the metal. He crawls into the woods, and when she comes back and doesn't find him, she gets even more upset. She goes into the woods looking for him. He hears her shouting and crawls into the foxhole to hide. She is going insane when she can't find him. He lights a match to look around. He finds a dead crow, but it wakes up screaming, alerting her to his location. He tries to kill it, but it's too late. She hears the noise and finds him in the foxhole, but she can't get him out. She decides to grab a shovel and dig until he is covered in dirt. Later on, she regrets what she did to her husband and digs him out. She tries to get the metal off but can't find the wrench. She drags his body back into the cabin, but it isn't to save him. She mentions that the three beggars aren't here yet, and when they arrive, someone must die, and that's why he is here. She cries on his chest, but she isn't sad. She has always been planning this, and the sadness was all a front to trick him. She even uses his hand to please herself after he passes out. That's when it is revealed that she actually saw her child fall and decided to not save him. He wakes up to find a deer standing over her and the fox sneaks into the house. He hears something under the floor and breaks it to find the crow and the wrench. He uses it to unlock the metal off his leg, but she tries to stab him. He manages to get it off and realizes that he has to kill her before she could kill him. He chokes her to death and ends it all. The movie ends as he burns her body and eats some berries in the forest with the animals that saved him. And with that, the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for amazing videos. See you in the next one.